Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about some of the new methods added to the string API in ES6. And let's begin with the following example. Let's say we have a URL. So it's going to be a URL with the HTTPS and the domain is going to be example.com. And let's say we wanted to check if that string, that URL, begins with HTTPS. So what are the options here? Well, one of the options that you might have seen would be to use the substring method. So the substring method accepts two parameters. The first one would be the starting index. So we're going to be looking from the very beginning. That's why it's going to be zero. And the second argument is going to be the ending index. So in this case, this would be, because we're looking for HTTPS, this would be HTTPS.length. And then we basically want to check if that string returned from the substring method is going to equal to HTTPS. Okay, in fact, let's also do a constant pattern that's going to be equal to HTTPS. That's the pattern we're looking for. And let's just replace those two values. Okay. So if that condition succeeds, we're going to console log secure. Otherwise, we're going to console log not so secure. So once again, the substring method is going to get a substring from the URL. It's going to start at index zero. And it's going to go up until, but not including, the length of the pattern. So in this case, the pattern is HTTPS, and it's five characters long, and the colon is the fifth element, so it's actually going to look just at HTTPS. So let's change this to HTTP, for example. So this should fail, and it does, as you might expect. Another approach that you might encounter would be with using the index all method. So basically, you pass the pattern to the index all method, and then you want to check that the index of that pattern inside of the URL is equal to zero, meaning that that pattern is precisely at the beginning of the URL. Now, if we change it to HTTPS, it's going to succeed and then we get secure. But the problem with this approach is that it's actually going to check the entire string until it finds the match. And in this case, it only needs to check the very beginning of the string, really. It doesn't need to go through the entire string and check it whether it's in there or not. So for that reason, we actually can use another method that's known as the last index of. So we're going to pass the pattern just like before, but we're also going to pass a second argument. So the way last index of method works, it actually checks the string backwards, and it's actually going to look for the last occurrence of the pattern. So what we're doing here is we're basically saying all right, so I want to check the string backwards, and I want to begin at index 0. So we basically just want to check the very beginning of the string. And we're going to look for that pattern at the very beginning. And then we also need to put the condition, meaning that the index needs to be 0. The pattern needs to be at the very beginning of the string. And in this case, we get secure, but if you switch to HTTP, you're going to get not so secure. Now, as you can imagine, all of these approaches are sort of like declarative, meaning that you have to explicitly define the logic for finding the pattern and then checking whether the pattern is actually at index zero. And it's a little bit cumbersome to write. So there's actually a new method in ES6. And all you have to do now is just to call URL starts with and then you pass the pattern to it. So if the URL is going to start with HTTPS, we're going to get secure. Otherwise, we're going to get not so secure. Another thing you might do with that method is to pass another argument to it. So let's say we still have the URL, but let's say you wanted to check if the URL starts with example at some index. Well, in this case, the index would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we want to check if the string begins with the word example at index 8. So in this case, we would pass 8 to it. And let's do console log of that. And we're going to get true, but for instance, if you pass something different, if you look at index 5, of course, that's going to be false because we have a colon at index 5. Let's move on to the next example. Let's say we have a domain, and I'm going to stick to example.com. And let's say we wanted to check if that domain ends with .com, so a commercial domain. So one way to do this would be to actually use the substring method. So you would do something like domain substring. The first argument would need to be the starting index, but there's one caveat. You're also allowed to pass a negative value and if that's the case, then that negative value is actually going to be taken from the end of the string. So I'll show you what it means in a second, but let's say we have a pattern here. The pattern we're looking for is .com. 
So if we pass a negative value of pattern length to the substring method, and then we compare it to the actual pattern, that's going to be the right condition. So let's do console log. It is a commercial top level domain, right? Otherwise, console log, it is not a commercial top level domain. So what we're basically doing here is we are getting the length of the pattern. In this case, it's four characters. And because we provided a negative value, the substring method is actually going to check from the end of the string. So it's going to subtract four characters and it's going to start at this position right here. And then you might know that the second parameter to the substring method would be the length of the string. Well, in this case, it's just going to go to the very end of the string. So it's going to look for this pattern dot and then com. In this scenario, it matches the pattern that we have um, defined as a constant, but we might change it to, let's say, .org. And in this scenario, this would not be a commercial top level domain. Another thing you might also do is you might also use index of method. So we could do something like this in domain index of, and then we pass the pattern to it. And then it gets a little bit more complicated. So we need to have the length of the domain and we need to subtract the length of the pattern from it. And then we need to check whether that value is actually a valid index, whether that value could have been found as an index inside of the string. So what we're doing here is we basically get the length of the domain of the string, then we subtract the length of the pattern, and then what this becomes is an index at which we actually begin looking inside of the string. So we begin looking for the pattern beginning at this index. And once we do that, we check if that pattern is actually found beginning at this index. And if it is, then we get a positive integer. Otherwise, we get minus one. So the check here basically says if you were able to find the index, that index would be a positive value. Otherwise, it's minus one, meaning you were not able to find the pattern. So we go to the second clause. Now, like I said, this is very, very confusing. So there's not actually a new method for checking if a string ends with a given pattern. So we basically just call ends with and we pass the pattern inside of it. So if I change the pattern to .com, we can see that domain is indeed a commercial top level domain. Now there's also a second parameter that you can pass. So let's say we have a console log statement here and we try to do domain dot ends with and we still have the .com but let's say we wanted to change the URL to something like example.com slash index HTML. We wanted to check if that .com is what the domain name actually ends with. So we can provide the second argument, which would be the length of that domain name, right? So we could do something like this, right? So I'm just going to put the example.com dot length. And in this scenario, it's going to be true. We're basically getting the length of example.com, let's just uh, console log that value to see what it's like. And in this case, we get 11. So the length of this string is 11. We're passing it as a second argument and we're saying, all right, so just look for .com at the end of that specific substring, you could say. Now, what about checking if a string contains a value inside of it? And this is sort of like what ends with allows you to do, but there's actually a new method that is much clearer and more suited for this specific task. So let me just clear out the old code. Let me clear the console. So let's say we had a URL and it's going to be an HTTPS URL at example.com, maybe slash posts and maybe also my first post. Okay. And let's say we wanted to check and I think I did a typo. It's not that, whatever that was, it's a const. Okay, so we want to check if the URL contains posts. There's a few ways to do it. One of them would be to use the search method. And the search method accepts a regex expression. So if that string contains the post pattern, we also need to provide a check here. So the index would not be minus one, meaning that it's a positive integer. We're gonna do console log. We are looking for a post, okay. Otherwise, console log, we are looking for something else, okay? 
So as you can see, this approach actually works, but it's a little bit slow because we're using the regex expressions. A bit of a different approach would be to use index of again. So we're looking for posts, and we just want to check that the index of that pattern doesn't equal minus 1. And once again, we get that value. But if we change it to, let's say, articles, of course, we're going to get the second console log because we're not able to find posts inside of that URL. But a different approach would be to use includes method that's been added in ES6. And so we just want to check if the URL includes posts, OK? So let me switch back to post, and we're able to find it in a string, as you can see. Now the very last scenario we're going to talk about is repeating a string. So let's say we have a warning here, and it's just going to say warning. I'm also going to add a space. And let's say we have another constant that denotes the number of times that we want to repeat that warning. So let's say you wanted to have a new string that contains the warning repeated three times, okay? So one way to do this would be, well, let's say we have a console log, okay? So one way to do this, like I said, would be to use, first of all, an array constructor. So what we can do here is we can pass the number of times to the array constructor. So that's, as you can see, it's going to create an array that has three undefined elements. So basically three empty spots, okay? And then once we get that array, we can also call a join method on it. And then we pass the warning inside of it. As you can see here, we get the value twice and not three times. Now, in order to solve that, we also need to increment the value here. And the reason for that is because when you call join with some kind of a pattern or a string, that string is going to be injected between the elements of the array. So in this scenario, we have three elements. So when the warning is sort of like injected between the three elements, you get two warnings, and that's why you need to increment it by one. And the other thing you'd also do is remove the new keyword. So here we're using the array constructor, but you could also use array as a function, and it's basically going to do the same thing. As you can see here, we get the warning. And there's also a space here at the end. So the one thing we could do is we could also call the trim method on it, okay? The other thing we could do with ES6 now is we can take the string itself, warning, then we can call repeat on it, and then we can just pass the number of times. So not only does this work the same way as before, and of course you could also call trim if you want to get rid of that extra space at the end, but this also reads much better. So this is a much cleaner API. We're saying, okay, I have a warning string, I want to repeat it three times, or whatever the number of times is, and you know, we can change it to anything else at this point. So it's much more readable and understandable. And this is pretty much it for string methods in ES6. Let's move on to array methods now.